What up techies? What's the deal with the planetary orbits all being on the same plane? Planetary systems with planets in orbit around a star are extremely common. Since our sun is called Sol, from the Latin word for sun, solis, everything having to do with the sun is referred to as solar, hence the name solar system. Astronomers quickly learned that all of the planets in the solar system, including Mercury, Venus, Mars, and virtually every other planet, orbit in nearly coplanar orbits once they began to study the night sky. Our current best explanation is that the planets formed from a disk of dust that surrounded the sun during the formation of the solar system, making their orbits coplanar. All of the planets formed in a flat plane because the disk of dust from which they originated was flat. Let's take a closer look at the fascinating field of planetary formation. Recent research indicates that each exoplanet is unique, and that there are many more than previously thought. Even diamonds may fall from the sky on some alien worlds. The cores of some of them are made of iron, while the cores of others are made of ice. It's possible for exoplanets to spin either clockwise or counterclockwise, at a fast or slow rate, and with a sizable or negligible mass. It's possible that some of them have vast oceans on their surfaces, making them inhabitable, while others may experience intense volcanism due to their proximity to their host star during a tidal destruction process. One thing we learned is that each planet is unique from every other planet. Nonetheless, there is a unifying factor among them. A circumstellar disk is an environment around a star where planets and exoplanets form. Just how is that even possible? Okay, let's back up a bit and begin at square one. For this, we'll use the solar system as a case study. When a massive cloud of gas collapses under its own weight, a star is born. There's a good chance that this massive cloud of gas was in a highly unstable equilibrium state, where even the slightest changes in the gas pressure could trigger a gravitational collapse, leading to an increase in molecular density and a contraction of the cloud. Since the cloud's components were otherwise stable, the collapse was almost certainly caused by something external to it. The explosion of a nearby supernova has been proposed as a possible explanation. A supernova is the final stage of a massive star's life when it explodes with all of its atmosphere released into space. The cloud would have gotten its start thanks to the shock wave's absence of sound. In this way, the death of one star can lead to the birth of another. As time passes and the cloud becomes dense enough, the pressure created by the heat and energy from this collapse counteracts the effect of gravity, keeping the system together. Hydrostatic equilibrium between gravitational and pressurized forces marks the moment of the star's birth. Stars are massive, flaming spheres of gas formed when enormous clouds of cool gas collapse. We believe that the vast majority of stars, including our own sun, were born in this way. What happens after this is less clear, but we do know for sure that the star has a circumstellar disk, and that material continues to fall freely around it. The reason we call it around instead of down is that matter in free fall does not travel in a straight line toward the center but rather in tighter and tighter spirals. The remnant of this initial whirlpool can be seen in the rotation of the sun and planets around their axes, and the revolution of the planets and other bodies around the sun. Even at the cloud's edge, far from the star, the remaining material kept spinning clockwise. Then, as a result of this rotation, something miraculous and yet remarkably straightforward occurred. The material settled into a thinner disk. This idea is one of the cornerstones of physics. Think about the washing machine you use. Your dirty laundry goes inside, you pour in the bleach, and then you turn it on. To that end, we have started doing laundry. Now you can see the laundry spinning, circling the washing machine's core. The centrifugal force acts to propel the objects away from the center and in the direction of the walls as they spin. However, a closer inspection reveals that they are not pushed in any direction. They are dispersed at random, but rather move around in a disc-shaped region. The orbits of your garments are, essentially, parallel to one another. This is what happened to the matter orbiting the sun billions of years ago. Due to the principle of angular momentum conservation, the material thinned into a disk, and as a result of collisions, planetesimals began to form. The planets, as we know them, formed from subsequent aggregations. There has always been a nearly constant plane, the ecliptic, along which the solar system's major bodies orbit our star. This is the most logical and beautiful explanation for why the planets in our solar system all orbit in the same plane. Nevertheless, planets are the only things that make up our solar system. And our solar system is not the only one out there. A telescope will reveal many other smaller bodies. Space debris like asteroids, meteorites, and dust. They are believed by scientists to be the oldest relics of the solar system's formation. The offspring of primordial aggregations that did not develop into planets. Because of the inclination of their orbits relative to the ecliptic, it is clear that these objects were left out of the primary formation process along the axis of rotation of the disk. Between Mars and Jupiter, in the main asteroid belt, is where you'll find the bulk of this space debris from the distant past. Vesta, the largest asteroid, 
has a diameter of about 329 miles, while the smallest asteroid is less than 33 feet in size. There are fewer asteroids that weigh less than the moon than there are that do. Jupiter can be passed in front of or behind certain asteroids. Trojan asteroids are exactly what they sound like, and NEOs are an abbreviation for near-Earth objects, which is used to describe asteroids that pass relatively close to our planet. NASA monitors NEOs frequently because of their potential threat. To protect Earth from an incoming asteroid, space agencies are actively researching methods to alter its course. Planetary defense is its own subfield of astrophysics and engineering. For instance, the DART mission is scheduled to launch in November 2021 and impact an asteroid on September 26, 2022, and will serve as an orbital demonstration of asteroid deflection. In order to redirect the asteroid Didymos, DART will essentially smash into it. DART will be the first space mission to prove that an asteroid can be diverted using a spacecraft. The results are highly anticipated. Be sure to give the video a like or a dislike before you share it with your friends so that we can keep making content that you enjoy watching. And if you don't want to miss any of our weekly videos, subscribe to the channel by clicking the bell. As a result, we realize that generally speaking, planetary orbits lie on a single plane. But let's take a closer look at the solar system we live in. Is it true that they're all on the same jet? Earthlings use the ecliptic plane through which the Earth orbits the Sun as a standard for referencing the rest of the solar system. From Earth's perspective, the Sun appears to follow a path that is 23.5 degrees off of Earth's spin axis, as it appears to revolve around the planet. The ecliptic is the name given to this trajectory. What this tells us is that the equator, or the plane of the Earth's solar orbit, is 23.5 degrees off kilter with respect to the axis of rotation. Based on this system, all other planetary orbital inclinations are expressed relative to Earth's zero-degree inclination as seen from the ecliptic. Compared to Mercury's 7.0 degrees, Mars' inclination is only 1.8 degrees. The planet's orbits around the Sun are depicted here. They are smooth, circular paths. However, Pluto's orbit is significantly different. Its orbit is extremely elliptical. It makes a very small circular motion as it orbits the Sun. Further, Pluto's orbit travels at an extremely steep 17-degree inclination. Pluto's peculiar characteristics are a direct result of its eccentric orbit. Its orbit is so large that it can swap positions with Neptune and move closer to the Sun than either of them would otherwise. This hasn't occurred since February 7th, and before that, it wasn't until the 1700s. Pluto's low mass and its interactions with Neptune have created a highly variable orbit for the dwarf planet. Because of this, astronomers have a hard time predicting where Pluto will be in the next few million years because the uncertainties add up and it is impossible to know where it will be so far in the future. Simply put, what we see in the universe today is the end result of physical processes that have been going on for billions of years. On the one hand, the disk shape of the solar system and other objects can be explained by straightforward physical principles. But scientists are aware that we inhabit a non-deterministic universe that is inherently chaotic. Consequently, even a small change in a system can have unexpected consequences. Thus, we can have a moon planet system or a galaxy with planets in highly elliptical orbits like Pluto's. Chaos, however, shows its effects only on extremely long time scales. Chaos events occur constantly, but their effects on human lifespans are minimal. Since our lives are so brief in comparison to the age of the universe, this allows us to treat the phenomena as quasi-static giving us the illusion that we can predict the behavior of the cosmos. Do you have any thoughts on the matter? Leave your opinions in the comments section below. Please subscribe to the channel if you liked the video. And if you did, please consider sharing it with your friends.